I'd like you to do two things. Firstly, think about the two most loved ones in your life right now. Great. Next, I'd like you to rank them on a scale of one to 10. <laughs> this scale is how much you share yourself with them. Your innermost thoughts and your emotions. One being you share nothing, 10 being that you're a complete open book. Cool, seems like we all have it. So hold that till the end of this low keynote and we'll come back to that. My low keynote today is about relationships and connections and about what holds us back from them. See, to me, a real relationship is one where you share yourself with your loved ones. You share your innermost thoughts, you share your emotions in aid and service of a better relationship. But I don't think we do that enough. And I don't think we have the strongest relationships we could. And a silent enemy here is our own misperceptions. What are misperceptions? Well, if I'm trying to share myself, I might be worried about protecting someone, protecting them from what my inmost thoughts and emotions are. I might be worried about changing the uh, image they have in their head of me. Or worst of all, breaking the relationship because we're scared of sharing ourselves. And I know this because I do this every single day. And it's something I'm trying not to do. See, I overweight the risks. I worry about protecting people. I worry about losing them. And as such, I don't share the risk I could have, share those risks. And even so, because I don't do it enough, I underweight the benefits. And I don't do it again. And I don't want you to make the same mistake with your close loved ones. I'm gonna tell you a few stories where I have closed myself off because of my own misperceptions. And hopefully you can open up then from there. I lost my father when I was six years old. He went missing on a business trip and we never heard from him again. And my family went into chaos. There was sadness, there was anger, and some depression as well. And from age of six to 13, I was told nothing. It took to when I was 13, and I was totally oblivious before that point. And I'm playing in the park with my uncle and his two, and his two, uh, two sons, my cousins. And I hear one of my cousins shout, Dad, Dad, pass the ball! And something just dropped. And I asked myself the question, he has a dad. Where is my dad? And misperceptions started filling my head. Was it my fault my dad had disappeared? What were they not telling me? What was a great secret? I'd been a happy kid beforehand. I'd run straight home from school and I would go to my family and tell them how my day was. This changed. I ran straight to my room every single day for the next year. I closed myself off from my family. I delved myself into my books. And I got great grades, which, was, which they loved me for. <laughs> but I got validation from my grades and not who I truly was inside. And it took six months of counseling to get past this. Six months of counseling to get over the grief. But moreover, realize that I was holding misperceptions in my own head. My family had lost a husband, an uncle, and a son. How could they tell a six or 13 year old boy that your father isn't coming back? Because that would mean accepting it for themselves. And I realized this was a misperception. I was wrong. So I became a happier kid from that. I opened up my family. I used to run to them and tell them how my day was because I know it was my own misperception but my misperception had closed me off for a year and a half to my family, and I'd lost that time with them. Now, the next story is a teenage rite of passage. It's the one we all know all too well, and it's telling your parents 
you've been on a date. <laughs> it's that kind of story. <laughs> I see a nervous chuckle around the room. Yep. To give you some backstory, my mother had been on four dates with my father, and they decided to get married. Very traditional in an Indian society. So, what I thought for my mother, what she wanted for me was, go to good high school, <laughs> get great university, get good internship, get great graduate job. You can see where this is going. Go to great graduate program, Stafford MBA will do. Find wife and have a very good life. <laughs> Tick box. <laughs> so I'm 18 and back home from college. It's the first time I'm back and I've been on a date with this wonderful girl. And for a week or so I've been debating, do I tell my mother? A week later, I'm in the kitchen cooking with her and I finally decide to break the news to her. But I'm worried. What's she gonna think of me? Is she gonna think less of me? Is she think I'm not traditional? But I say it anyway. Cooking mushrooms and I say, Mom, so I've kind of met a girl. Oh, you met a girl? <laughs> what do you mean, met a girl? Uh-oh. <laughs> We've been on a few dates. Oh. Have you kissed yet? <laughs> and at this point, my heart is going, ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum my misperceptions are filling my head. I'm just thinking, oh God, what do I do now? And I decide to tell her. I say, yes, but very nervously. <laughs> and her reaction is one that I never could have imagined. Ooh. <laughs> tell me more. At this moment, I realized my misperceptions were all gone. <laughs> she didn't want me to follow the traditional path. She was happy and excited for me. And so now, I'm very open with my mother about my relationships. If anything, she's too involved now. <laughs> but that's a story for another day. My final story is about getting to know my father better. Now, as you recall, my father went missing when I was six, and I have four memories of him. That's four memories of someone who's 50% of my DNA. That's crazy. And last year, when I was doing a talk at the GSB, I realized this. But the reason I hadn't asked my family since I was six was because of the fact that I thought they needed to be protected. It was a misperception. Yes, they were hurting. They'd gone through this strife. If I opened this can of worms up, then I would be causing a family struggle. So I had held back. But I realized I just had to know. Four memories was not enough for me. So I took my uncle into the cold sitting room two Christmases ago. We had normally have a very jovial relationship, so he knew something was up. He goes, Jay, this seems really serious. What's going on? And now my misperceptions are playing. Am I going to hurt him? Am I going to cause family struggles? And his emotions start bubbling up within me. And before I know what I'm saying, I go, what the hell? I know absolutely nothing at all. What the hell is going on? I know four memories. I, you haven't told me anything. I know you're hurting. Let me know. His face, his jaw is dropping. His face is getting whiter and whiter. And my misperceptions are playing. Oh God, what the hell have I just done? But his response, again, wiped away my misperceptions. I can't believe we haven't talked about this sooner. I had no idea why you've never asked me. And I know that we needed to have this discussion. Misperceptions wiped. My uncle didn't need to be protected. This wasn't going to cause some family struggle or strife. But I, my own misperceptions, had held back knowing about my father since I was six. I could have known 
19 years ago about my father, yet my own misperceptions had held me back from finding out about 50% of my DNA. That's crazy. And I don't want you to make the same mistake that I did. So I'll ask you this. Go back to those two people at the start of this Lokina that you had in your head, your two loved ones. And this weekend, ask yourself, what misperceptions are you holding about those two loved ones that are holding you from fully sharing yourself and having a strong and great relationship with them? And then just go, eh. <laughs> Take that risk. Because if those two loved ones aren't worth that risk, then who is? Thank you.